Hello. Greetings. Mm -hmm. Genesis 36. Now, we will not read Genesis 36 because it's two columns in my ESV, two whole columns plus of names and places, and we'll just bog down if we try to get all the details. And I can't pronounce half of them. And the, <laughs> it's, it is noteworthy, though, that there's so much space devoted here to what amounts to one genealogy, the genealogy of Esau. Mm -hmm. And then you think, well, why does Genesis spend so much time on Esau when he's plainly out of God's favor? Mm -hmm. And then you realize, well, there is a reason for that. Because Edom, like the nations that we call Gentiles in the rest of the book of, well, the rest of the Old Testament, they're all out of God's favor, but they're in God's plan. And they're all mentioned in different places. You, you get God talking through the prophets about different nations. So he's interested and he's concerned, and he's even shepherding these people. Yeah. Even if they're unaware of it, he's because well, he passes judgment on things they do. So behaviors. So one of the points that's made here is that there were sheiks, that is, leaders or shepherds of it of Esau, very successful with much possessions. Mm -hmm. Who ended up long before Israel was was created, because mm -hmm. they're slaves in Egypt while all of this is developing. Yeah, verse thirty-one says. Uh, in the land of Edom before any king reigned over the children of Israel. And then it tells you all about his his family and his... I mean, it, yeah, it said that he would have... Was it ten? Ten sheiks? No, that, that was... Um, Is the Ish Ishmael. Ishmael. Oh, yeah. Okay. So uh, we don't want to mess up the two stories, except <laughs> for one thing. They are parallel in that Ishmael who's also a child of Abraham, is blessed even though he's outside the promise. Yeah, and that's true of Esau as well. So in, in, this, in this reading, it mentions uh, in verse 6 and 7 that when, they, when he went away from the presence of his brother Jacob, for their possessions were too great for them to dwell together. Mm -hmm. And that reminded me of uh, previously when when they first meet up he says to his brother Jacob you don't have to give me anything I have enough yeah so obviously he was blessed and that's because he was a descendant of Abraham and Abraham's all his children had blessings attached to them just because they were his children so that's one point that they're all connected to Abraham so they're all getting blessings not necessarily the promise that yeah. is the promise of Messiah and the and that this nation, this great nation that will come through Abraham's line, can only be created ultimately by the spiritual method that God uses, namely the law of Moses and then Messiah coming himself. But then you look at the bigger picture outside of Edom and you realize it's not just the people close by, that is the closely related to Jacob, mm -hmm. that are being blessed, it's also the other neighbors. So in Deuteronomy, God says, don't touch the land of the Moabites and the Ammonites and several other neighbors because I have given it to them. Yeah. So God's generosity, contrary to the, the, the narrative that's going around now by internet, that the Old Testament God is just mean and he's even genocidal to people who he doesn't like. Yeah. No, he's, the plan of God, according to the whole book of Genesis, is, mm -hmm. is gradually unfolding before us. And that includes the blessing of yeah. All people. So he blesses and he judges. And he has that right as God Yeah. to do that. So verse 43 concludes with the thought that these are the chiefs of Edom. That is this entire list that took two columns. These are the chiefs of Edom, that is Esau, the father of Edom, according to their dwelling places in the land of their possession. Mm -hmm. So God has given them this land to possess and they're going to hang on to it for looks about 18 or 1900 years mm. they're going to have that land and be a visibly a power mm. at some points they're going to have more power than israel mm -hmm. for instance in the days of the apostles mm. the, the Herod herodians are the last hurrah mm. for the edomites mm -hmm. and then they disappear from history but god kept them in relative prosperity for that entire time of 18 or 1900 years mm. And you were going to read a text, I think, from Acts, right? Yeah, this, this uh, text comes to mind when you read this and realize that 
Paul is only saying in Athens what what we just read are representatively in the the successes and prosperity of Edom. Mm -hmm. Paul is saying that about all nations basically. He says in Acts 17 verse 26, and he, that is God, made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, mm -hmm. having determined allotted periods and the boundaries of their dwelling place. Mm -hmm. So from the very beginning, it wasn't just Israel that had a place and a time. All nations were given yeah. time. And I think the next verse is so significant. There's a comma at the end of 26, and it says in the next clause that they, that is these nations, mm -hmm. should seek God and perhaps feel their way toward him and find him. Mm. The goal of God is to reach all people. Yeah, and mm -hmm. he's given them the the wherewithal, that is space and time to do it. Mm -hmm. So really, Paul says in Romans 1, they have no excuse for not knowing him because he's given them time and space. Yeah. Then we have a couple of quotes, right? Mm -hmm. Kidner, Barnhouse, and Campbell Morgan. Okay, so Kidner says, after the usual pattern in Genesis where a new stage of the story is to be introduced, the record of the collateral branch of the family is first completed before the main thread of events is picked up again. This chapter clears the ground for the final section of the book. And Barnhouse says the warfare between Esau, the Arab world, and Israel is the touchstone of Near and Middle East politics. So this idea of the collateral mm -hmm. or marginal lines being developed first. So you saw that in Genesis 10, right. where God gives the genealogy of Japheth and Ham before he gives the genealogy of Shem. Mm -hmm. So this pattern follows throughout the whole book. Mm -hmm. So what's it saying? It's that God cares. Yeah. And that again is not what a lot of people want to hear about the God of the Old Testament, right? Yeah. Morgan says, the most interesting aspect is of course that, that of the relation to Israel. One brief and pregnant sentence in the chapter flashes its light along the coming centuries of Esau is Edom. What Edom meant to Israel, the subsequent history reveals. Though personally Jacob escaped the anger of his brother, the great harvests resulting from his deceit were reaped in the after years. Mm. Oh, these harvests of the centuries, when will men learn the awful and stupendous greatness of life the deed of good and evil, of truth and falsehood, done today, is not ended, though it is done. There is indeed nothing small. This sense of infinite values touching minutest details is lost to man, generally, and it is only restored with the bestowment of age-abiding life, which, among other things, is the consciousness of this very fact, that the things of the, pre the passing moment are irrevocably linked to the undying ages. Yeah, I think we do not think about that enough in today's world where individuality is so stressed that we don't realize that what you do matters individually because it does have impact on future generations. It's not just, you're not just cocooned and everything just affects you or your family or even just your time period. Oh. It has long-term effect. So this, this is why I think it's important to think in terms of God has the right to bless and also to judge and have a time limit for mm. when things have to happen. But this God of the Old Testament, who we hear is wrathful and always looking for an excuse to blast people, mm. he gives Edom centuries, yeah. even millennia, because I'm thinking of two, two of the so-called minor prophets, Obadiah, Mm -hmm. one page in in the prophets is completely devoted to the hatred that the Edomites carried over from generation to generation so that when Jerusalem was destroyed in the days of Jeremiah mm -hmm. they they rejoiced yeah. they rejoiced and took advantage of it mm -hmm. and then a couple of centuries after that Malachi comes along and says Esau that is Edom will build but I will tear down God says mm -hmm. So he's still watching them, and he's still giving them time to repent. Mm -hmm. And that continues right into the mm -hmm. New Testament when the Herods are, 
are even put in a position of authority over Israel by, by Rome. Yeah. But then they disappear. So God, what's the cliche, God's, uh, God's wheels of justice grind slowly, but they grind surely. Yeah, yeah. The incredible patience of Yahweh. But there's a mindset that just will not be uh, satisfied or happy with God giving time. Either he's he's giving people too much time, or he and he's not acting. Yeah. Or if he acts, well, that's wrong too, according to the same mindset that he doesn't have yeah. a right. It's interesting that the most frequently heard complaint in the Old Testament is God's too slow, not not yeah. that he's too wrathful. Yeah. So we've got a link which is based on Genesis 10, the table of the nations, the 70 nations. And the theme we chose was there's only one race in the Bible, and that's mm -hmm. the human race. Mm -hmm. Okay. See you next time.